Oh yeah. Figuring that I can do this. Am I live? Am I live? Am I live? Yeah, that's right. I think I just recreated the uh, the opening scene from which Quentin Tarantino fell. Um, hello everybody. It is uh it is time for our, our walk today. Um, my phone is being weird about letting me know when it goes live. But now I can see that people are joining us. Um, and so that means it's working. And uh, and as I was setting up my phone, I realized I could do that uh, that cheesy um, theatrical opening uh, trunk shot. Today, uh, or maybe I was being inspired by, you know, like angry films. Um, Tarantino being one of one of those kinds of people who likes uh, being angry uh, in a violent way, and I'm not espousing violence today, uh, as I take you for yet another walk on a sunny day here in Oakland. Um, I've been tinkering with my selfie stick and um, and trying to like tape it a little bit so it's not, I keep noticing there's like a tapping as I'm walking on the phone. So I've taped everything down and, and put like egg cartons of foam on it to, um, to try to keep it from making that sound. So let me know if the sound's better today. Uh, hi, Dika. And I'm gonna walk backwards, see if I can keep the wind from my microphone today. Uh, or actually, I guess I can do it this way. It's probably better. Uh, so what are we talking about today? We're talking about anger and needing a hug and how we can use touch, uh, affectionate touch and intimacy to better take care of ourselves. And for those of you who know some of my history, I'm one of the founders, one of the creators of Cuddle Party, which is a non-sexual communication workshop about affection and non-sexual intimacy. And that I started in 2004. And Marsh Baczynski, who's an amazing educator, helped, uh, jumped on board after the first cuddle party. She jumped on board uh, at the second cuddle party. And then together we, you know, basically rode this amazing so, uh, media wave and blogger wave back then because the news story of cuddle party was New Yorkers are paying money to cuddle, and the end must be near, the apocalypse must be coming, hurry! And it was such a feel-good news story, because so many New Yorkers, you know, are just kind of perceived as being grumpy and unapproachable, that New Yorkers cuddling was this great human interest story, That so we got all this coverage, and Marsha and I got on the Montel Williams show, and we taped an, an episode of the Tyra Banks show, and Marsha had her picture in People Magazine, and like everybody wanted to talk to us, and we got calls at all hours of the, the night from morning DJs in Ireland and all these other places, uh, talking about, you know, why do people need to cuddle? And Marsha and I became the unofficial spokespeople for affectionate appropriate touch and why people need touch not everybody but maybe everybody at some point certainly there are some people who are like don't touch me and there are other people that like oh my gosh like pounce on me pile on top of me so everyone's different but what I can tell you is studies have shown that if you're feeling angry um, and emotional and just maxed out and you're not getting any affectionate touch in your life or any even just healing touch right because you can go and get massage uh, and that doesn't have to be I mean that can be caring and, and nutritive, nutritive nourishing um, you can go get a massage and it doesn't have to be affection in the intimate kind of friend romance way but like caring, present, conscious touch is really, really useful and healing. And your body does really good when it has more oxytocin in it. 
and isn't in a fight and flight mode um, and when you're kind of stuck into a, a stress loop when you're in your sympathetic nervous system which is fight and flight you know you being in your parasympathetic nervous system which is rest and relaxation you flooding your your system with oxytocin which is the 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 hug hormone or the cuddle hormone as it's sometimes called that's the same hormone that um, people's bodies release when they're breastfeeding it's the same hormone that that we release when we orgasm or one of the hormones so these things have been studied and there's a lot of really good health effects associated with getting you know a decent amount of oxytocin in your system and since we're we're uh, not actual canines uh, who upon seeing our owner just drop a bunch of dopamine and oxytocin in our systems because we're so happy to see to see our our owners uh, since we're not dogs you know think about how you can get more touch and, and more oxytocin in your life and a hug can be one of those things uh, not just one of those quick speed you know drive-by hugs but an actual like embrace where you you stay hugging for more than three seconds um, and I'm not exactly sure exactly the uh, the study and the amount of time but I'm gonna say as somebody who's led over 350 cuddle parties uh, and a lot of other kind of touch heavy events that when you create kind of conscious present embraces for more than 10 13 seconds I'll say uh, it feels like when you just breathe and let yourself oh, get in your body uh, but there's a shift and I believe that that shift is the beginning of your body starting to release oxytocin and a bunch of other good stuff and your brain kind of shifting from stress to relaxation I've talked in other videos about the benefits of making sound using uh, manually stimulating your vagus nerve so that when you take a deep breath and you're welcome to do that at home take a deep breath and just let out a kind of like uh, the kind of sound that you could feel in your chest if you put your hand on your chest that kind of vibration you're manually stimulating your vagus nerve and that's v-a-g-u-s for those of you who want to google it right now and when you're stimulating your vagus nerve, you're telling your brain and your nervous system it's not in danger. And it's, a, it's letting out that kind of sound can also be a way to kind of self-regulate and help your nervous system start to calm down and reground. So embraces that are consensual and that you want, right? Because if you're, somebody's holding on to you too long and that's what you don't want, I don't think that releases oxytocin. Um, but you being held in a way that you do want and letting out sound and continuing to, to breathe deeply, those things can go a long way to helping your body course correct if you're feeling really stressed, if you have a lot of anger. And this is not about pushing anger down, but it's about um, helping regulate uh, overwhelm, basically. So you can still feel, uh, feel angry but have it be used effectively if you're in a state of overwhelm and your anger is you know basically in a feedback loop and you're just getting more and more stressed then it's hard to show up for work it's hard to show up for activism it's hard to show up for your love relationships and for your family and for your friends so i'm just kind of positing my thoughts today on our walk towards that end like how can we use touch and be more conscious about the kind of touch that we want so that we can be more effective just as human beings and more effective and connected in our relationships so let's take a look at some comments here uh christina marie hello thanks for sharing the video um i appreciate that you appreciate all this um for those of you who for whom this is resonating uh if you want to hit your your likes and your hearts and uh, make it kind of rain those emoticons those emoticons that i love so much make it rain make it rain uh share your thoughts and what you're thinking about and how this stuff is landing on you today 
Uh, and I'm sharing this too. Like I do have a lot of conservative friends who've been very patient with me with all of my, you know, ranting and sharing about feeling upset and disturbed. Um, but, you know, to my conservative friends out there, and I do have them, and I, I hold them very dear. They're, they're my friends that I go to and ask questions when I'm trying to understand, you know, more conservative opinions about life and the world. Um, some of my friends, are they're getting bashed. Um, and they're excited that, they, you know, the, maybe the person that they voted for is in office and they can't understand why everybody's angry and upset. And then they're getting angry and upset because of everybody else. And so I think this advice, just in general, whatever your beliefs are um, and views of the world, I think this can be really useful advice around understanding yourself and how your needs around connection and touch um, and being able to use affection to just be more effective in the world. And also, you know, if you can, you know, allow yourself to feel your anger, to feel your upset, to feel your exhaustion. It's not about making feelings bad, and it's not about pushing them down further, but I think if we can all learn how to be more coordinated with our emotions, um, more self-aware, have more agency over our feelings and how they sometimes mug us and strip us of our ability to, to choose uh, and stay connected, if we can learn how to um, be more coordinated with ourselves, we can be more compassionate to others who are having a bad day, who can't get that leg up. Um, we can teach each other practices to be able to self-regulate in more healthy ways so that we can be connected. So, you know, I'm not telling you to go out and, you know, massage, give, you know, give somebody you hate a foot massage. Um, but if you getting more touch from day to day is helping you be able to walk in somebody else's shoes, um, understanding the people that we can understand. I'm not, I'm not making an excuse for emotional or physical abuse. Um, I don't think you should have to put up with that uh, from anybody, especially your loved ones. Um, but I am saying that my thoughts on this are, if I have my tanks more full and I have more resources, and I'm not stressed or caught in some weird loop of anger, it's, it'll be easier for me to connect to somebody and have them feel seen before they feel attacked. Um, and your mileage may vary. I, I, I'm not making an excuse for bad behavior, but I know that when I'm overwhelmed, I don't always behave at my best. I'll leave it there. So I think that's the walk. I've walked uh, up and down this little path here in Alameda. That's the Alameda Canal, or whatever they're calling it these days. On, uh, on a patch of sunniness here in Oakland. I'll be in Los Angeles later this week. Uh, and then in two weeks, I'll be in Los Angeles for the Sexual Health Expo, the She Expo. And I get to interview and present an award, um, I think. Ooh, maybe I, maybe I, I outed something I was supposed to share. Ooh, I don't know, maybe I did. Forget I said that. Um, I will be at She, and I will get to um, interview a lot of cool people. So go to the Sexual Health Expo uh, website, sexualhealthexpo.com, and see if you can't figure out who I might be interviewing. And I'm also going to be wearing my tux, my tuxedo, rather than my sex geek shirt. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Leanne, thank you so much. Um, everybody, I, I appreciate these videos. I appreciate the, the critique that people hate the walking. Um, hopefully my uh, things I, I did with duct tape and foam on my walking stick made it uh, sound better today. And, uh, and we'll just keep improving. And then maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow we'll be on my treadmill desk. I don't know. But I think tomorrow I have a special guest joining me for our walk. Uh, so maybe it'll be, uh, there'll be a little walking three-way for us tomorrow. Uh, make it rain, some emoticons. Share the video if this was useful for you. 
thank you so much for being a part of my life and giving me something to do that feels productive uh, on days when sometimes I feel confused, exhausted, and a little bit angry at the world. Bye, everyone. Thanks for the emoticons. Thanks for tuning in, Sex Geek. If you would like to continue with the brain sex, do me a favor and click subscribe right here. If you'd like to watch me on social media, that's where you're going to go. Next video, maybe? And if you really would like your own Sex Geek t-shirt, please click right here, right now. Boop. N no, no, really, like...